comic show and tell. I'll be your host today. And I'd like to introduce Andy. You collect romance books, right? I do, David. Yeah. I do. That's your thing. That is my thing. You are Dr. Love, is it? Are, well, you, not, are you not Dr. Love? Um, yes, I'm blushing in, inwardly as you're telling me that. <laughs> But yes, on the CGC boards, I am known as Dr. Love, a name I chose for myself to describe the kind of books that I'm interested in. Because you're, you're more than interested. I think that you're, you're pretty much an expert at this stuff, aren't you? Uh, some would say, well, that someone would be me, David. <laughs> <laughs> you spend a lot of time with, with this genre of books. How long have you been collecting these? Well, it's about 30 years now. Okay. Not as long as other people have been collecting comic books. But uh, it's not like I grew up collecting romance comic books. Right. None of us grow up collecting romance comic <laughs> books. Most of us don't even know romance books exist even today. Uh, I got into it lately, meaning okay. uh, a late part of my life, uh, basically because uh, I was priced out of the merchandise I really would have wanted to collect. What was that? Silver Age. Superhero, Marvel okay. particularly, the stuff I grew up with. I was born in 55, and, uh, you know, FF, uh, X-Men, Avengers, Spidey, DD, I mean, you name it. That's, right. that's the books of that's my That's your era. That's my era. Right. But by the time I was 40 and I was interested in, in collecting books again, because I had been in and out of comic books as a teenager and as a young man growing up in my 20s and 30s, by the time it came around to the time I was 40, um, I'm a great collector. I, as minty as you can get, that's, okay. that's what I'm All right. interested in. It's not, no, it's not just the book for me, it's the condition. And All the right. book. But uh, I was priced out of the books of my youth. I just yeah, couldn't you're, afford You're also a completist? In a manner of speaking, once I set my sights eventually on romance, okay. I would have wanted to collect them all. Would have? I would have. Okay. But I had to, give, I had to throw in the towel on that task, friends. It became too mighty for me and, and too costly eventually. Yeah. Uh, but it is possible for somebody in this world to collect them all. There's a certain set amount of romance books in this universe, David. Right. And that number, in case you're wondering, I happens am. to be 5,846 issues. Of, of romance graded, of graded books. like No, a... no, of published romance books. Okay, so... If you're going back to the 40s, I take it. Yes, right? late and then, 40s. And then what was like a publication month like back then? How many publications do you think were coming out? There was a lot. I mean, the newsstands back then were flooded with books. Yes, right? that is correct. It was called the Romance Explosion. Uh, it started in 47 with uh, Simon and Kirby. Okay. With a book called Young Romance Number 1. Yeah. It did very, very well, and that was uh, September 1947. I think it sold a million copies, and Simon... And Kirby had a um, profit-sharing agreement with a particular publisher called Prize. Okay. The other publishers sold a million sold was, copies. Yeah, a that's, million copies. That's with insane. For a book, the likes of which they had never seen in comic books. Now, okay. uh, romance or love stuff was pretty typical for pulps, magazines, but it had not made its way into comic books, which were really, and still are, drawn for young men. Publishers were looking for the next trick, and uh, Simon and Kirby uh, came up with it in terms of romance, and the other publishers just ran to jump in as fast as they possibly could. Okay. I mean, everybody wanted a part of that. And back then, you know, these are one-man companies or two-man companies. Uh, they didn't have a board they had to run these decisions by. They said, uh, we want to go with this, and then within two months they were going with it. Um, so within a short period of time, uh, all the other publishers kicked in. Um, all, all told, 41 publishers got some romance together, 330 different titles. Like I said, 5,846 issues. It was mostly done by the time 50, 51 rolled around. I mean, they exploded. All of that happened in that short period that, of time. Pretty much that short period of time. Okay. They blew it out the doors. They flooded the market with merchandise more than the market could handle. And uh, more than young girls who were pretty, pretty much the only ones buying. I mean, it wasn't young guys buying these romance books. Then now or ever. Um, it was girls, they were interested, they didn't hold on to them, they bought them, they read them, they threw them away. Right. One of the reasons why, uh, if you're interested in condition, romance books in condition, those two things don't go together. So pretty much, they got rid of them, they weren't interested in holding on to them, not like we do, not like guys do. Right. And they they're were not, gone. Well, they weren't collectibles. No. 
They yeah. weren't collectibles. They were periodicals like any magazine or any yeah, Here today, newspaper. Here today, gone or, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, kids stuff. Uh, so by 50, 51, it was mostly done. There were some companies by 55, really done. And there were some companies that held on and continued to publish them all the way up until 1983, which is when the last romance book was published in uh, June of 1983 by Charlton. And that was it. Done. Interesting. Yeah. So ever since then, the genre has just not really been repeated. No, it has I know been that repeated. things are different now. There's a lot of non-hero. There's a lot of graphic novels. There's a lot of ways to tell a story. Yeah. A lot of female-dominated, but not romance. No. It's not like, I don't know how else to describe the stories, and maybe you can kind of go into that, but were, were the stories all kind of centered around one thing or multiple types of storytelling, or was it across the board just different? I wish I could tell you, David. And I say that because <laughs> I'm not a consumer of the romance stories, okay. particularly. And for a long time, I was purely a cover collector. The romance books didn't grab all the best names in the, in the comic book publishing world. The top names did not draw romance. So it's far and few between. And basically, it's a story of pain and loss, unfortunately, okay. for the women involved, uh, of heartbreak, a tale of woe. Depending on the publisher, common joke is uh, a romance book, you'll see a woman crying on the cover. Basically, the story is what's on the cover. Yeah. Uh, not a lot going on in the interior. So, you brought um, some books that we get to look at. I did. And uh, I have not seen a lot of these until today. I was just starting to go through them before we started this. And I'd, be yeah, I'd be shocked, David, if you had seen these books yeah, before the today. the first book, I said, I've never seen these. He goes, I know. Yeah, I, I do know. Uh, there's no, there's he was no, right. There ain't no reason why you should have seen these romance books, okay? If you're not collecting them, you're not seeing them. Um, I mean, they show up in heritage auctions now, uh, and they're more collectible than what they were. When I got into them, nobody wanted these books. And that was one of the attractions for me. They were a challenge, especially in grade, and they were inexpensive. But there is, it seems that there are romance books that are very hard to get, and if one came for sale in grade, there's going to be a fight for it in an auction, and chances are it's going to go for a very high amount of money. A fair amount of money is, is, is relative. Um, for instance, a romance book, you know, that might be highly sought after and considered by us or me, a romance collector, to be very expensive, might be somewhere between seven fifty and a grand. So it's still affordable. It's one of the reasons I like okay. it. Okay. You still can't find them. I mean, it's not as <laughs> if it's not as if if you're willing to pay ten times that much, well, then one would turn up. It ain't that way with romance. They just they just weren't kept over the years by the people that bought them and read them. They were thrown away. And as such, especially if you're interested in grade, you, you can't find them. Now, if grade doesn't matter to you, go to eBay, you'll find all you want. Yeah, I find that with a lot of books that I like. Yeah. I can get them in a condition that I don't care for. And I'm the type of collector, too. I like a book to be in grade. Yes. That, that's not everyone's thing, but it's mine. And if it actually, there are certain defects that I have to get rid of that book immediately if I, I find them. I just bought a, a particular Bronze Age book that has scratch on the cover. And, and the scratch is about that long, which is about that much bigger than I want it to be, so i got to get rid of this book. Oh, I hear you. For me, it's indented staples. I can't stand them. <laughs> really, I can't stand them. For others, it's tan pages, yeah, you yeah, know, or stains, yeah. or sun shadows. I don't like all those things. <laughs> it all depends on what the book is, right? Yes. All things are relative. I mean, if, if you didn't have a, any other choice but to get a book, because there's some books I'm sure you're going to oh, show me. Oh, contraire, my friend. I'm sure you're going to show me some books that there probably isn't a very high grade, like a 9 or higher, maybe. Most of my books are not a nine or nine. No, but I'm saying even in existence, a lot of books that oh, yeah. don't that that are that old don't seem to, especially if you're they're not heavily collected. Yes. Um, and some of those, some of the covers of some of these books, I know are heavily collected because I know a lot of people that would buy them or own them. So, show us some comics, man. I, Let's look at some books. Yeah. 1959. This is a fantastic, beautiful, romantic cover. I call this one of the beginnings of the Bronze Age for romance. This is fantastic. Love this book. I do too. 